Hello learners, this is Pradeep Naik here, CEO of Fuel Media Solutions Private Limited. I welcome you all to another exciting session of a wonderful industry, the event management industry. In my previous session, I started speaking about event risk management and we spoke about different types of risks. Today, we're going to talk about safety norms. I did mention while discussing different types of risks that we will only talk about types of risk at that session where I did accustom you guys about different types of risks because you should know what the risks are. Today, we're going to talk about the complete safety and measures that we have to take to overcome such risk, whether it is due to an external reason or it is due to event operation related. We'll go one by one and probably I might take this uh, safety norms over a two session period because there are so many things that we have to cover. So allow me to share a presentation. All right, so as we mentioned, we're gonna talk about safety norms. So what is a safety norm or what does uh, this term actually uh, mean when we're talking about in the event area? Safety norms, I'm sure we have safety norms for traffic, we have safety norms uh, for uh, on a, the place that we stay. Uh, society has a different safety norms for different types of functions, but how do we uh, ensure the safety norms are maintained in the event? That is what we do. So, there are a few uh, definitions for it, which say the safety and welfare laws are continuously changing and making their way for development and best practices. So yes, safety is something that, which it is more like technology. It has to evolve with time and it has to update with every uh, time that we uh, are there in this society. So whether uh, the safety norms um, might be defined by the government, whether it be done by the community or by the local authority, or it could be some safety norms that is defined by your own company or by your uh, employees of the company who have you know, defined a few safety norms. So all these things would uh, constitute for the uh, well-being of the event uh, so that the event would um, go as uh, expected, would run as expected and achieve the ultimate objective of that event. For example, if you're talking about a concert, we want a risk-free concert to happen. So. Um, Having predefined safety norms, either by the company or by the local authority or by the government, if you follow that um, to the teeth, then I'm sure uh, we'll be able to uh, achieve the outcome, what we are anticipating from the event in terms of could be revenue, in terms of good experience to the customers or could be to the audience. So it is very, very important that we follow the safety norms. So the first thing that I'm going to talk about is the venue and site design, because that's where it, the entire thing. So once we receive the brief from the client, this is where we start. So what are the things that we have to keep while doing this? So the first one is the site suitability assessment. So whenever there is an event, there is a particular site that we decide. It could be a hotel, it could be a convention center, it could be an open ground that we're going to convert, or it could be any place, or it could be a playground. So there are a few parameters that we have to check while doing the event. First one, traffic and pedestrian routes and emergency. So if it is a small scale event, like if it's for 30, 40, 50 people, you don't really have to worry about these things, like in terms of traffic and thing. Exits are of course have to be taken care of, but when you're doing a large scale event, when you're doing an event for 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 people, we'll have to make sure that traffic routes are quite clear. There are uh, enough broad roads in case of emergency, if the ambulance has to arrive, uh, if you am, for example, if I'm doing an event in a busy road, uh, the ambulance, it might only take a lot of time for them to reach. So we have to assess um, in such a way that whenever we're doing big events, we have to look at locations which are, uh, which have good accessibility in terms of roads and uh, good accessibility in terms of safety, um, uh, like fire tenders or ambulances reaching their own time, um, including the emergency access exit. So the venue should be such that it has enough uh, space and all these things have already been taken care of. So um, nowadays, whatever big conventions that we're looking at could be the Bangalore International Exhibition Center or could be uh, the high tech, uh, high tech, which is in Hyderabad. All these things are built in that way that all the uh, basics in terms of uh, fire exits or emergency exits or uh, traffic, etc., are taken care of and pedestrian movements are taken care of. Second is position proximity of noise sensitive building. So if you're doing an outdoor event or if you're doing an event which involves a lot, a lot of noise, a lot of noise in the sense it could be a concert or it could be a DJ uh, uh, marathon that is happening at the DJ show or it could be a wedding function that is happening. 
you will have to ensure that you are not doing this event right next to a hospital you're not doing this event next to a school you're not doing this to next to a religious place the reason being they might uh, get disturbed because those places are permanently situated there but you are doing an event for a day might cause some kind of a damage or harm or any kind of nuisance to the public who are already staying there another thing is doing this kind of events in a residential area there could be apartments there could be houses there could be some senior citizen uh, you know staying there who might uh, get disturbed with this kind of uh, thing so there are some venues like that which are in uh, like today um, uh, our metropolitan cities could be bangalore bombay delhi have developed so much that finding venues within the cities become a challenge but whatever few venues we have are in the heart of the city and i'm sure uh, they will cause some kind of a nuisance or distraction to the neighbors because they could be residents or anybody staying there and we have to always work uh, either with them or around them and it at times becomes very very challenging second is a geographical location so um, does that what uh, geographical location is in the positioning for example uh, as i mentioned biic uh, which is the bangalore international exhibition center or for that matter our airport is situated on the outskirts of the city so it all matters like if you're doing something a very big event in the heart of the city it will be choco block from all the angles people accessibility problems to the neighbors everything will happen but if you're doing something in the outskirts you will also have to see where it is situated uh, is it uh, fine is there, is there enough roads and uh, uh, is there enough lighting to reach to that location all these things to be taken care and uh, which part of the bangalore uh, or, or the city i'm sorry i always keep referring bangalore because that's where we belong to but which part of the city the event is conducted is it uh, well connected by different uh, roads or well roads all these things would matter so again this the topography so there was this instance um, where sun one in the year i guess uh, 2017 or 18 yeah 2017 or 18 now uh, was uh, connected on top of a hill in uh, pune uh, so now topography what happens is that uh, it takes at least 25 30 minutes for you to get on top of the hill and then on top of the hill is the event your different experiences are on different levels so um, you will have to be very careful when you do such events i'm sure sun one team did a great job there they did a fantastic event uh, but uh, i'm sure their operations team did go through this list what we are doing right now and hence they did take care of all those uh, things so all this uh, even the hornwell festival that happens uh, in northeast so it happens on a particular hill so or uh, could be the storm festival different different events do happen but yes we have to take care of that whether it is and the edge uh, is there uh, enough safety for it all these things has to be taken care location and availability of services water sewage gas telephone etc yeah this is again very very important though there are few experiential events that happen inside the forest or uh, uh, no secluded location but most of the events uh, whenever we do we uh, make sure if there is large number of uh, people involved we have to ensure uh, that uh, there is proper water available there sewage system gas electric or phone telephone telephone i think is the most important thing because that's the uh, first and foremost thing that you would require to call for uh, help or anything but yeah water and everything so if you're doing any kind of an event make sure either you uh do a makeshift arrangement of all these facilities or choose a location which already has all this so it is very important we have to take care of basics second is the site plan now let me just go back so we did position so where the event happens in and around we discuss traffic position proximity noise sensitivity geographical location topography locations availability of services now inside the venue what are the things that we have to take care first one site design considerations so the design should be in such a way that one is uh, it has to be approved by the engineering team the reason being we just can't go saying that build it by 2 feet 4 feet and everything there are certain basics of engineering that will apply in construction of your backdrop in construction of your trussing etc which has to be done by a professional so the site design whoever designs it has to keep in mind all these aspects as simple as the width of the entry that we are going to do the height of the barrication that we are going to do the difference between the audience and the stage how much area is required for 1000 people to stand how much of, uh, what is could be the size of the restrooms that are going to happen what is the size of the backstage what is the uh, how many fire exits are required how many emergency exits are required all these things which form a part of the site design has to be considered while designing it 
venue capacity and occupancy. Now, there are a few pre-constructed venues uh, which has a designated capacity. Could be like 1,000 uh, people in theater capacity or could be 500 people in cluster and so on. Now, there are at times what happens is people try to save money by uh, putting in more people uh, in a venue which can seat 1,000. Now, if it is a sit-down conference where the entire audience, the 1,000 people are going to stay from morning to evening, then you will have to look for a venue which is suitable for a little more than that so that the rest all thousand people are seated comfortably and they can move around comfortably and at the times of emergency can be evacuated comfortably but at times during weddings what we happen we take a venue with capacity of thousand but we invite 1500 people the reason being it's a flowing crowd we know that at a given point of time not all thousand five hundred people will be there there will be around 750 800 people so that is what the math works in the mind of the operations or the venue guide. Exit requirements. Time and again we have discussed this. It's the one of the most uh, important, uh, biggest of the biggest uh, events like Olympics, Commonwealth, everything. This is the foremost priority. In, uh, in fact, what happens in a few of the conferences that we do is that we give them a proper, like how you get onto the flight, there's a proper safety manual instruction, how they do, how to wear your seat belt, and they will show you that you know, there are four uh, exits or two um, on the right side of the wing, two on the left of the wing, etc. So in a very, very similar way, nowadays in a lot of events, we do run through a small uh, safety instruction uh, uh, guide that we do through the MC so that they would know where they exit and how. So when we design in the site plan, we have to consider the exit requirements. When you access, so is it through road, is it through a kacha road or what kind of a road are we using to reach out to the venue? All those things have to be taken care. Entrances, depending upon the number of people who are going to attend the event. If it is just 50, 100 people, then yeah, I'm sure one entrance and one exit should be more than enough. But when we're looking at 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 30,000, 40,000 people, you might have to look at multiple entrances and all these things. Uh, sight lines is uh, the, in terms of, uh, at times of emergency, how people can watch, what are the different signages that they have to see, where are the markings so that you know where the exit is. So all these kind of sight lines. Video screens, video screens is showing you the exit screens uh, or showing you the uh, fire exit or the map of the venue for you to refer at any given point of time. Seating arrangements, again, um, you can't make it too. Um, so, all these points which I'm uh, discussing is a part of the site plan, okay? So uh, I'm sure if you're in case getting confused here. Seating arrangement. So when seating arrangement, what happens is that between every two rows, there has to be two and a half feet gap. The reason being, when you sit, there has to be enough space for the other person to pass by. I would say that keep it three feet also if you have enough space at the venue. So it is always good to be comfortable, um, maintain multiple aisles. So if there is like 12 rows happening, then make sure there is at least two aisles in between. If you're doing 30 rows, make sure there are six aisles in between. So all these things, uh, time and again, uh, you will have to give more importance to it considering the number of audience that you're going to engage. Uh, slopes, again, uh, so how, uh, whenever we're putting up a stage or in a backdrop or a seating and the slope, so we'll have to ensure it is done well, all the leveling is done so that the slope uh, inclination is met and then the, the staging is done accordingly so that there's no, no incident that happens due to slope at times if there is a, a little bit of rain. So if the soil gets uh, moist and uh, because of the slope, it might collapse. So all these things have to be considered. Observation points. This is the point uh, where our crew member of the security people would mark where they can stand and they get a kind, a kind of a bird's eye view of the venue uh, so that all the things are under control and they can keep observing if things go wrong. Production infrastructure and backstage requirements. So there has to be enough space given to that. The reason being, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know cables. There are a lot of uh, uh, tech rider of the artists and etc. Which is there. There has to be enough room for artists to you know wait for the next performance. Uh, the waiting areas etc. It has to be uh, uh, well lit. It has to be uh, good uh, um, in the sense it can't be suffocating. There has to be enough air circulation. All these things has to be taken care. Fire and ambulance requirements. Of course, any event that you do ensure that uh, it is there always. Oh, God forbid, uh, if there is a requirement, we always wish that we don't get to use all this, but as a safety precautionary, we have to ensure that there is a fire tender and there is an ambulance as a standby at the venue always. And if it is a closed venue, um, the at least there has to be your crew who has to be trained on how to use the uh, fire equipment, sector, which I'll discuss further in detail. Police and stewarding positions where they will be planned, hospitality area, 
where bifurcation for them, noise considerations, that is, as I told in the previous thing, neighbors and everything. So you have decibel measuring the devices, which you can check. Perimeter fencing, the reason being if it's a ticketed show, then you don't want hooligans or any other uh, people who would want to, you know, um, uh, gate crash uh, this kind of events. Front of the stage barrier requirements, if there's a good artist and you know um, the audience might uh, you know, overpower themselves onto the stage, you have to mention, uh, make sure there's a good barrication, signage, welfare facilities, excess visitors. So all these things, there will be around 20 elements, I guess has to be considered by the designer or by the operation person when they do the site plan. Next, we're talking about structures. So now many events would require structure. Um, if there's a constructed venue, I'm sure there is a structure already, but there are uh, events that we do outdoor and which would need, require a temporary structure. It could be a temporary, like a, uh, like a basic, as basic as, um, a superstructure which we call or it could be a german hangar or anything for that matter i'm sure you can look up on uh, google what does superstructure mean what a german hangar mean what does shamian tent mean you it's a different types of covering uh, and they all have a different purpose and they offer different quality so um, while we put up structures sometimes we put up a small structure like for, for, for just 20 30 people we might put up a 20 by 20 or a 30 by 20. But when we're doing large scale exhibitions and everything in outdoor, we might look at, you know, um, a 200 by 200 uh, German hangar, etc. So when we're putting on those things, we have to consider multiple things. Is uh, the ground that we're putting, is it level? If it is not, where are the pillars? Like there'll be multiple pillars when you're looking at that size. So we should know where all the pillars have to be supported in what ways. Is it a strong foundation required or what? Is there a slope? So all these things has to be considered while putting up a structure. So a careful inspection, including level. Uh, so the people who put up structure, they have uh, this uh, meter that they use to you know, gauge the level. So all these things has to be documented. You just can't go by, I think, oh, this looks good, this looks, don't go by the looks. Hire a professional who will do proper thorough check of the ground and only then suggest how to put up the structure. Barriers and electrical installations. So barriers, uh, there are different purposes for it. One is to provide physical security as in the case of high perimeter. One is, as I told you in the beginning that uh, when we're doing an outdoor event, if it's a concert, we want to barricade the entire venue from outside. So because it's a ticketed event. We know that it's 3,000 tickets sold, 3,000 people have to be inside the venue. Any more than uh, a gate crashing, all those people should not be allowed inside. Or uh, no, anybody could be a hooligans or could be uh, anybody locals who want to create trouble. So we have to ensure a good barrication is done. Again, um, at times, if it's a very big artist, you have to do a barrication, which would also cover the eye level. The reason being uh, somebody who's not paid the ticket and somebody who's paid 10,000 rupees is inside watching the show and somebody's not paid is standing by the you know, barri uh, barricade and watching the show. So we cannot uh, allow all this kind of, uh, you know, it, it's kind of an injustice, okay? So we cannot uh, allow that happen. So they are, what people at times do is they do two perimeter bar barrication. So one is for, for the entire concert venue and then they leave another 10, 20 meter gap and then for another barrication. So that way, what happens is the distance is easily maintained, it is taken care. Another types of barrication is inside the venue where between the stage and between the audience, uh, again, between the audience, uh, if it is an event that uh, where uh, the female and a male have to be separated, then again, the barrication there, or it could be uh, areas where people uh, consume alcohol and people where they don't consume alcohol. So it purely depends upon what the brief of the event is, what is the type of the event. So barriers in multiple levels is required. Next is electrical installations and lighting. This is very, very important. Uh, uh, the most uh, uh, problematic area, if it is not taken care, is this area, electrical installation and lighting. Because when we do a lot of like, in a closed structure, everything is already fixed, so it is easy and taken care. But when we're doing outdoor events, what happens is that we put up temporary structures, we bring generators, we pull up new wires, we pull up, you know, we put up poles, we fix lights onto it. So ensuring that proper cabling is done, good quality cabling is done, proper electrical engineers are there to take care of that. All the cables are, you know, kind of uh, taken care by wire measures so people don't trip on it. Multiple things to be taken care of for the safety and because um, the, when we're doing bigger, there'll be at least 10, 15 generators and you know, high tension cables running there. So it might cause huge amount of damage if things go wrong in terms of fire or anything can happen. 
So electrical installations and lightings, time and again, you will have to call a professional who will take care. So, uh, so what we are discussing is safety norms. All these things, as a part of your production operations team, they have to have a checklist and they have to abide by it and they follow and they do it pin by pin. So um, you should make sure uh, you do a thorough check. So if you have two, three people in your operations department, dedicate one person to just do a check on these lines. Because this is a problematic area. We have seen time and again uh, that these areas can be problematic. So because of our learnings, we have ensured that we only work with professionals. We only work with people who use quality products and who pro follow proper standards of procedure SOPs. And all safety norms are taken care, as I mentioned, wire managers, underground cabling, et cetera, et cetera. All these things to be done. Next, we're going to talk about generators. I said uh, it is connected to the electrical station. Generators have to be made, ensured that they are parked at proper location and the cabling that is done from generators, they are done well to the uh, you know, uh, place where the, from where the power will uh, be distributed to different, could be LED wall, sound, lighting, stage, etc. So it has to be done. It is um, the diesel, uh, which is the refill for diesel for generators have been kept at a little far away distance. Again, with all the fire safety thing done, uh, all the generator machines that have come there or the generator vans that have come, they are all uh, good condition vans, any loose wires and all things like that. So it is very important. And also uh, today we have uh, silent generators. So that's okay. But in case it makes any kind of noise, make sure you're not parking it next to uh, somebody's residence or something, creating some kind of a noise to them. And also the generator will emit some kind of smoke. So ensure that that smoke is not towards the stage and not also towards the neighbor who might also get uh, disturbed because of it. Next is the pedestrian safety. This is probably when we're doing some BTL activations, we're doing some event outdoors or uh, when we're doing event uh, in some ground and uh, how people will access to it. So those things also have to be taken care by giving you know proper signages and a proper dedicated lanes to be done. Uh, all uh, communication is done clearly in terms of signages saying this is purely for pedestrians who are reaching to the venue. And in case you're doing BTL activation, ensure that you avoid the pedestrian place and do it within the vicinity of where the building or the uh, location is. Parking lot safety. Okay, uh, here I will also talk about an instance that happened. Uh, if you all Google up, uh, just it happened a year back. Last year, it happened in Bangalore during the Aero Show. Uh, so Aero Show happens at Jakuri Lanka uh, once in um, two years, I believe, once in two or three years that happens. One of the biggest aero show, uh, air show that happens in Asia, I believe. Uh, I've been multiple times. So uh, it is an airfield that is there and uh, uh, thousands, I would say, sorry, lakhs and lakhs of people visit this event, which is spread over seven days. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, so it is an Air Force area, it is an army area, so definitely it's not an event venue. Uh, so all the arrangements are done like a makeshift, all uh, the temporary arrangement. So there's a lot of fields around uh, the airport, uh, so in, near that Air Force area, and uh, they normally convert that into parking places or event places. So one such par uh, parking places so where there was a lot of uh, uh, grass, so what happens is that every aero show is a very well organized event, a very well planned. Even such events also do go through some kind of mishaps like this, but which happened last year. So I'm sure it was outsourced to an event company or a contractor who will take care of the parking. And that parking, what happened is that there were this tall grass, which is like complete dry grass, and somebody, some driver or somebody would have like, you know, lit up a, a cigarette or a BD or something would have thrown it, and that place caught fire. And within a matter of, because people parked there and they used to walk up around 20, 25 minutes, because the parking was on the other side of the road and this side of the road where the air show was happening. So you'll have to walk that far, you know, to watch the show. And uh, I think within a matter of 20 minutes, uh, one car caught fire, one after the other, and we were parked together. So within the span of like half an hour, one hour, more than 200 cars caught fire. It, uh, I think thankfully nobody got hurt. Uh, that's uh, uh, the savior part of it. But a lot of cards got damaged there, around 200 to 300 cards, and putting a lot of things on risk because it's an international aero show that is happening. There are uh, international uh, delegates who are watching, uh, uh, people from US, Russia, etc. We all have come there. Uh, all the top ministries of, excuse me, of the government uh, were present there. Multiple things happening. So it was a very so. Uh, after that event, um, it has become kind of an eye opener for everybody to look at parking lot safety, not only in terms of you no know, fire or something, it also could be in terms of theft or something, which happens normally at wedding venues where people break into the car, they steal the belongings which is there inside the car. 
So ensure that you have a good parking uh, management company that you are tied up with for that event. They have enough manpower to ensure good vigilance around that area. That area has good fire and safety precautions taken care. All this to be done so that you have a risk-free event. Because parking also. So as I told, each and every element that we are going through, you might feel it is going to be like so many elements, but each element will con uh, no, contribute to the success of the event. Next is fire safety, exactly. So in every aspect, we talk about fire safety and now we dedicated talk about fire safety. Uh, so, so fire safety is the paramount, the ultimate important for event organizers and the, it's kind of, it becomes a nightmare uh, situation if you don't uh, take care of it well. So things that have to be taken care is the uh, number of exits and the final exits that we have. In case of fire inside the venue or inside the concert area or inside the event area, what are, what can be done? So it is always advised that you do a drill before the event if it is a multiple days event, if possible, or at least make sure all the uh, information is given prior to the event. And in case you have a booklet or a handbook that you give in the event, it is printed well so that people know where to go at times of emergency. Design and demarcation of means of escape, exactly, which I already mentioned. Is there a proper design? So at times of emergency, even if their power goes off, there should be proper signage where you can see and proper uh, lanes done so that people can exit without creating any kind of panic. Proper signage to show places of safety, as I rightly mentioned, um, multiple places, time and again, very prominently, it has to be showcased. Stairway and ramps. Uh, in uh, buildings where we're doing the event on the 20th floor or the 30th floor or the 10th floor, make sure the staircase, you know, proper uh, demarcation and signages are done where the staircase are there, and they, to be, uh, they are to be used at the times of fire safety. And ramps, again, have to be checked once again because people with disability might find it a difficulty, you know, accessing that. Exit and direction signs, again, part of it. Normal lighting and emergency lighting, yes. At times when we're doing uh, inside the structure or inside a venue or in a building, we have to make sure if because of fire, if the power goes off and people are not able to move, we have to ensure that there is at least emergency lighting is an option which runs parallel with the electricity or something like that so that people can see where they are supposed to go. All the signs have to be on a reflective uh, uh, no material. Firefighting systems, yes. Uh, your crew, your team, and the volunteers, everybody have to be trained on how to use those cylinders, how to use the fire safety equipment that is there in the inside the venue. Uh, even before you know, the fire tenders and everybody rush into the place or arrive at the place, you should know the basics so that you can take care of the situation before it you know, goes into the next level. Means of giving warning in case of fire, exactly. So when we are doing big events, we have to ensure that fire tenders are already there and a person who is expert in the fire safety is also present because uh, he can give a proper instruction how to how to leave the situation before people start panicking. Fire safety advice on curtains, drapes, and other materials. This is purely to be followed by the operations team. The kind of material that we use are not kept very close to the wires or the wires that run through the drapes and everything are not taken care of well. There are no loose ends and everything so that there is no short circuit and the drapes catch fire and things like that. So fire safety is one of the most important aspects that we all have to take care of while we do event. And there are different parameters. I'm sure we can go into detail of this. So uh, in my next session, we're going to talk about a few more aspects of our safety norms. Um, those are, uh, I would say, in terms of insurance, we are yet to talk about food and safety. We are yet to talk about uh, noise reductions. We talk about sewage and uh, such treatment. So all these uh, aspects are uh, still uh, yet to be uh, completed, which I will uh, do in our next session. Uh, I hope uh, today, whatever we discuss in terms of, you know, site plans, uh, venue site plans, or could be fire safety, those things are very, very clear. I would uh, request you all to look up uh, a few more details on Google or on uh, YouTube, or uh, different fire safety uh, drills and measures that has been taken care in the event. Uh, this is uh, most important. I'm sure um, as event managers, we are here to learn how events work. But at the same time, uh, this is a part, a very important part of our learning is the fire, uh, is the uh, event safety norms. So I will uh, talk about in detail about the other safety norms in our next session. Thank you all. Have a good day.